In this video, we're going to work with a display referred color management system in Resolve. So the first thing I'll do is go and check out the color management settings. You can go up to File, Project Settings, or use this gear icon down here at the bottom right as a shortcut. I'll click that. I'll go to the color management section. And you'll see up here the color science menu is set to DaVinci YRGB. And that's a display referred system you get by default. You'll see the timeline color space is set to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. And that's the default color space of the timeline. Now that affects the way the color controls work in the color tab in terms of how they are mapped or how they are arranged. It doesn't actually affect the look of the various views. Now if you do intend to output to a different color space, you can change this menu. However, Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 is common for working with HDTV. Let's see what this looks like in 17. I'm in 17, which has fewer menus. So there's fewer ghosts and menus, and fewer menus overall in this section. We saw the most critical ones, color science and timeline color space. You may have to change the timeline menu to get the color space you want. So here I've switched it back to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. Let's return to the older version. I want to make sure it's set to DaVinci YRGB, Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. This is already set, so here I can cancel. Let's go ahead and bring in a clip. Right mouse button click down here in the Media tab. Go to Import Media. And once again, there are a few shots included for you within the Footage folder that's within the Project Files folder. Let's start with the Alexa LF camera shot. And that's stored in the ProRes format. I'll open that. And see it's washed out. That's a good indicator that it's actually in logarithmic color space. Many high-end cameras use that space. Logarithmic is nonlinear, so the exposure curve is not on the straight line. And this is often used to emulate the same exposure curve of motion picture cameras. When you bring in footage, Resolve will attempt to interpret the footage based on its metadata. If you have a clip selected, like I do here, you'll see information about that clip over in Clip Details. Now, if you are using Display Referred and you are using logarithmic footage, it's generally necessary to apply a lookup table or a LUT at some step in the process. In other words, you can't really output this, for example, if you need to go to Broadcast Video. There are different places you can apply LUTs inside Resolve, and each option has advantages and disadvantages. Let's try the first. And the first is to apply a LUT right to the clip in the Media tab. You can right mouse button click over the clip, and you'll see a list of LUTs. And these come with the program. In general, you apply a LUT that matches the camera that captured the footage. And there are many camera LUTs you can choose from. With older versions of Resolve, the LUTs are divided between multiple menus, 1D, 2D, 3D, DCTLs. With Resolve 17, they've collapsed that down to a single LUT menu. Let's take a look. Here's 17, right click, and there's a single LUT menu. So all the LUTs, no matter how many dimensions, and whether or not they're DCTLs, will appear in this menu. You can add your own LUTs to this menu, and we'll discuss that later. For now, I need to choose a LUT that matches the camera that captured this footage. So here I want Aerie, Aerie Alexa Log C to Rec 709. So this will transform the logarithmic space to Rec 709, which is a linear space. Rec 709 is also a gamma adjusted space, where gamma adjustment is applied to improve the contrast so it looks better for human vision. I'll return to the older version. So indeed, the contrast changes to what you might expect for something going to broadcast video. So now a transform has occurred in the Media tab. I'll right mouse button click over the clip and go to Create New Timeline, and use the default settings. Now if we skip over to the other tabs, you'll see the same result, and get the result of the applied LUT. In fact, this even carries into Fusion, because Fusion grabs a clip right from the Media tab. And of course, you also see that result in the Color tab, and the Deliver tab. Now there are advantages and disadvantages of applying the LUT in the Media tab. The biggest disadvantage, though, is the fact that the LUT occurs before the color grading. The LUT's already applied. You can see the change in contrast. In general, colorists prefer to color grade on the logarithmic version. Get better quality. 
Because once again, LUTs are destructive, and odds are they're clipping in such a way that you lose some of the value range. Now that's okay if you're creating dailies or creating a non-critical result. So there are times that you need to quickly work and applying the LUT to the clip is fine. Now the advantage of this is you can apply a different LUT to each clip. So if you're working with clips from multiple cameras, each clip can have a unique LUT designed for that camera. So that can make it easier to work with, at least quickly. Now that's not the only way to apply a LUT though. Let's take a look at some other approaches. We'll go back to the clip, right mouse button click, and set it back to no LUT. And once again, it's washed out and logarithmic. The second way to do it is to apply a universal LUT through the project settings. Go back to my project settings. While well, I'm in the color management section, scroll down, and here's the entire lookup table section. And these are universal LUTs. In other words, they'll be applied to all the inputs or all the outputs. Once again, Resolve 17 has simplified the menus in this area. So there's a single menu for input lookup table that contains all the possible LUTs. For example, I can set this to Area Alexa Log C to Rec 709 and have that apply to all incoming clips. It might make sense if all the clips come from the same camera footage, but if you're using footage from different cameras, it probably won't work. I'll return this back to Node Let Selected. There's also an Output Lookup Table menu. I'll talk about that in a moment, but I'll go back to the earlier version first. You can also use this section to control all the outputs. So I go to 3D Output Lookup Table, or if I go to what's called Output Lookup Table in 17, set that LUT. Now when I save, that LUT's applied to all the outputs. If you return to the Color tab and take a close look at the node, you can see that it shows once again the logarithmic washed out version. But the LUT's really applied at the very end of the process, after the color grading. So that might work if you need to go to a single output, but have that occur at the very end of the process. I'll turn this off for now, no LUT selected. Let's look at a third method, which is probably the most powerful and most flexible, and that's to apply LUT right in the color tab. You can apply LUTs directly to the nodes you have. In fact, I could apply a LUT right here to this corrector. You can see if I right mouse button click, there's a list of LUTs we've seen before. A more powerful way though is to add additional nodes and then you can be more selective about where the LUT occurs in terms of the pipeline. I'm going to go up to the color menu and create two new nodes, which are very useful, and these are called serial nodes. I'll go ahead and click this one time here to create the first one, and then you can apply a second one by simply pressing Alt-S. The nice thing about the serial nodes is they're automatically inserted into the network, and a new one occurs at the end of the chain. I can apply a LUT to any of these nodes, or color correct any of these nodes. So for the maximum flexibility, I can actually go to the center one, the middle one, right mouse button click, go to LUTs, and then choose a LUT. I'll go back and select the area one once again, and there the LUT is applied in the center of that network. What that means is I can apply color grading before or after the LUT, depending on what I want to achieve. So for example, I want to go back to the first node and do some quick color correction. Maybe I'll just adjust the contrast curve here. What that means is the color grading is occurring before the LUT. That means the color grading is occurring in logarithmic space. In fact, I can always go back to the LUT and turn it off temporarily. So that color grading is occurring in logarithmic space. Go back and turn this back on. In fact, you can change the LUTs at will. Because this node occurs after the color grading, when I change the LUT, it doesn't affect the color grading. So perhaps I want to move into an HDR space. I'll select one of these HDR LUTs. Now, of course, I'm always free to go back and further fine tune my grading. Now, the other option is to apply the grading after the LUT. Let's give that a try. Go ahead and reset this curve here by clicking the reset button. Then go to the third node. And you can see that serial node has its own set of color grading controls which have not been adjusted. Go ahead and adjust that. Now the grading occurs after the LUT. Now this might be useful if you only plan to go to a single output 
or if you're just used to grading in a different color space. For example, if I go back and set this middle node to the Rec 709 LUT, go back to this serial node here, that way I can grade while I'm in linear gamma adjusted space. Now keep in mind that each clip has its own network and therefore it can have its own LUT and its own color grading. Take that even further though, by creating multiple versions for each clip. And each version can have its own network, its own LUT, and own color grading. And that might be useful if you need to go to multiple outputs. Let me go ahead and press Control Z to go back to color grading before the LUT. But now I can go and create multiple versions. To create a new version, go to the clip, right mouse button click, go up to local versions, and create new version. Now, a new version is a copy of the previous version. I can go in and change that. For example, I can choose a new LUT. Perhaps I do want to go to Rec 709 and I do want to go to an HDR space. So I'm going to go back and choose an HDR space. And then I can flip between versions and go to the right mouse button, click menu. And here you can see each version listed so I can load each version. Or a quicker way is simply to use a shortcut and you can use Control B or Control N to hop between your various versions. You can have more than two. So each version has a unique LUT, and each version can have unique color grading. Now, whichever version is visible is a version that goes to the Deliver tab. So that's the version you get to render out. If you want to render out a different version, change versions. So there I'm back to version one, and that's the one that goes to the Deliver tab. You can also compare versions side by side. You go to the split button right here, you can see all your versions laid out. They go in order. So here's version one, here's version two, then you have version three and so on. Now remember this will render out. So if you don't want to render out the split version, just be sure to turn off the split button. So there's a few ways to work with LUTs in the display referred system. The first is to apply LUTs to individual clips in the media tab. And those LUTs can be different if you have multiple cameras. The second way is to apply universal LUTs through the lookup table section, and that'll affect all the incoming or all the outgoing clips. And the third way is to apply LUTs in the color tab. So remember that where you apply the LUT affects the color grading. So you have to decide if you want the LUT to occur before the color grading or after the color grading. If you want to take a look at this, I've saved the finished version as Alexa display referred, and that's included with the project files. We're ready to move on to the next step of using a display referred project. And we'll take a look at that in the next video.